Hey, thanks for checking out my video today, guys. Uh, today, I want to uh, do a review for you um, from a noob's perspective, uh, from a guy that's never flown a drone, uh, never owned one. Uh, I didn't even fly a friend's when I had the opportunity. Uh, just had no desire to do it whatsoever. Um, I saw this at Target. It was $1,000. Um, I've been curious about him, I have to admit, recently. I've been watching a lot of Casey Neistat, and um, some of his um, his drone footage just looks amazing. So um, I, I wanted to try it and just test it out more than anything. My uh, reason for buying was just to try it out. Uh, I, I definitely plan on returning this thing. I personally can't find a reason to keep it or to spend $1,000 on a drone. There's so many other things that I would rather spend $1,000 on, like a better camera for doing my videos or lenses or something like that. Uh, for me personally, I just do not do any um, outdoor videos for my channel, so I just can't see wasting $1,000 on, um, on a drone. Um, I will say I've used it for two days now. It's very cool, uh, very awesome, and I will show some footage of this thing. Um, I was flying it today. It was very windy out, and the pictures that I got, the video that I captured, was rock solid. Um, I'm very impressed with how small this drone was. I was actually flying over top of a river, and um, you know, with the intention of returning this thing, the last thing I want to do is uh, wreck it or um, drop it into a river or whatever. So I was very cautious um, with flying it. And as being my first time flying a drone, it was very intuitive, very easy to um, actually fly and made me feel very comfortable flying it because I knew that if I would do something wrong, it would actually take over and correct itself from actually crashing or you know running into an obstacle or whatever the case would be. Um, there is a beginner's mode on this that you can turn on that will prevent you from going higher than 30 meters uh, or 30 meters away from uh, where your your home location is so uh, that certainly helps with um, it getting too far away from you where you can't see it or potentially wreck it or crash it into wires or a tree or something like that um, on the bottom you can see there's uh, these are two like infrared sensors or radar sensors and then you have a camera there and a camera there and out the front here there's dual cameras um, not including the gimbal um, and then in the back there's no cameras as far as I can tell now that doesn't mean that there isn't some sort of radar sensors or something there uh, but as far as I can tell there's nothing nothing in the back of the drone um, when when I unpackaged this thing, it did come with an extra set of blades. So if you did, you know, break a blade on one of the sides, you'll have one blade for per side because these blades, I can't put this blade on this side or vice versa because uh, of the way the uh, rotor spins. So um, you do have one blade uh, per side as a backup. Uh, as far as the wires are concerned, you do get two extra wires for the um, the remote. Now this wire here actually will plug into your phone down here, and this is an iPhone, so I had just the standard you know iPhone connector there. But it also does come with a USB Type C and a micro USB connector, and that's what these two are right here. Uh, this is another micro USB cable, and this is actually to um, charge up the uh, controller which you actually do with the power brick so the this cord plugs into that and then it plugs into just an outlet but on the other side here you have two USB slots now one of them you can use to power up the or to charge up your controller and the other slot there I presume that you could actually uh, charge your your cell phone from that uh, now this other cord here is actually the a connector that would uh, charge up the battery and the battery comes off really simple you just squeeze there's two buttons on the side there you just want to squeeze those and it pops right off and this is what you got now replacement batteries are ninety dollars I did not buy an extra battery um, again I just wanted to buy this to test it out see what I thought of it um, 
and just for this review. So uh, to charge it up, you simply just need to take the connector and push it onto the bottom of the battery like that and uh, it will charge up in about an hour and a half. Uh, and the controller as well is about an hour and a half to two hours. And uh, that's pretty much it for hardware. Uh, the box that it came in is nothing special. It's just a cardboard box. I probably wouldn't recommend that you transport this around in that box. Uh, maybe buy a case to put all this stuff in or just simply throw it into a book bag. Now for me, um, I saw that guys, they had things on Amazon where you could actually um, buy like special propeller, you know, locks and stuff. So when you have it all folded up, you can actually put these little things on and it'll lock the blades in place so that they're not all flopping around when you're trying to put it in in your bag or take it out or whatever. Um, so I have a bunch of these Velcro straps that I use for just tidying up wires on my computer. Um, and I just took two of them and put them together and literally just wrap it around the actual uh, drone itself. And it basically serves the same purpose and I don't have to worry about the plastic uh, ruining uh, the finish on the actual drone itself. Now um, on the front here we have our um, 3 axis gimbal and this does shoot in 4K which the uh, video footage that I got is awesome. You just have to learn how to fly the drone um, slow enough and not jerk the actual drone or camera around so that you get a nice smooth uh, picture. And I will show you guys some of that stuff. But with this here, um, basically this is just a silicone cover and you just pop that off and then you actually have your gimbal inside there. Now when you first pull this out of the box, what you need to do is you need to pull this bubble off of there and there's like a little latch on the bottom. You just wanna lift up and then that comes right off. Now once you do that, you can see the gimbal's actually locked in place. So during shipping, it's gonna be locked into place. That way it doesn't get damaged or bumped around too much. So there's a little plastic thing right there and you just wanna squeeze the sides of it and then just pull it off just like that and you can see that I have that off and now the gimbal actually is loose and um, it can move but you do need to pull this off uh, before you actually attempt to fly it that way the um, gimbal can move around now if you want you can actually put this back on you don't have to and in my situation I didn't because this will and can cause a glare um, if the Sun hits it which will you know affect your your video footage so um, you can fly this on if you want, if you're worried about debris hitting it or something like that, or water, I, I don't know what reason you would want to have this on, but you can fly it with that on. Uh, but again, in my, my situation, I just flew it with it off, and it was fine. There was no issues with it flying with it off. So, um, the app, you do need to download a, um, a, an app for this to work, and it was it's called the DJI Go 4 app. Um, now, when I looked at the reviews, they were horrendous. They were two stars out of five in the App Store. I started reading through some of the reviews, and it looks like it's people that had the drones, you know, previously from that version. They just had to update to the newest version, and there might have been problems, or they took features away. For me, never flying it, never knowing what any of the previous software was like, it flew perfectly. It operated properly. I didn't see any issues with it. Um, but just to let you know, a lot of people complained about the, um, about the software in the, uh, app store. I guess there's something where this thing is constantly needing to be updated. So I would recommend if you have a drone, turn it on before you leave your house. Um, make sure that any firmware is updated before you actually get out to wherever you're going to be flying it. Uh, there was some reports in the, in the reviews that I read that people had to sit there and wait for their firmware to update before they could even fly the actual drone, which then will cause the battery to drain down because they have their, their units on the whole time waiting for that to finish downloading. So um, I don't know if that's an issue that, that DJI needs to fix up or if it was just user error. It's hard to say, but I thought I'd let you guys know either way. Um, yeah, it's I, I liked it. I thought the controls were... Uh, awesome. I thought they were very intuitive and easy to work. The app was awesome for me to use. Um, there's features in there where it can follow you around. 
uh, once you click on it and you tell it that you want to you want it to follow that that subject around it will fly after you and uh, keep the the camera focused on you and record whatever you're doing so that was neat um, you can there is some hand gestures that you can do with it um, you have to wave at it and then it recognizes you and then you can actually uh, do do this and it'll supposedly take you know selfie shots of you um, I didn't try those features out uh, I was just getting accustomed to flying it without wrecking it or hitting trees or something like that so I wasn't getting too in depth with it um, but from a from a perspective of never owning a drone never flying it um, this thing is fantastic this was a very very easy to use it made me feel very comfortable using it um, and I would definitely recommend it if if you're in the market for a drone I would say uh, the DJI Mavic is definitely the way to go now they did just recently release the spark which is uh, basically a smaller version of this that the that the uh, props don't you know fold up so it's going to be about the same size as this the body itself is a little smaller but you can't fold the propellers up under like you can this so this is actually going to be a little more compact than that um, that one is half the price at five hundred dollars this one's a thousand but this one actually does 4k as where the spark only does uh, 1080 so there's going to be a big difference in quality there uh, the images I got off of this look fantastic. They look amazing. And I haven't shot too much stuff in 4K yet, so I was definitely very pleased with this. Um, but yeah, there you go. If you're somebody that's just into drones as a hobby and you just want it to fly around and, you know, record things, or if you're doing, you know, weddings or events outside, anything outside, vlogging outside, anything like that, this is a fantastic way to go. It's it's super duper portable and it's very easy to carry around, uh, especially when the uh, phone is not docked in this thing. It's very, very compact and it's very easy to remove too. So you pull the phone out and then you just take and flip these two things down in just like that. And there you go, that's it. That's that's two very compact you know pieces you just throw in your, your book bag or whatever you're carrying them in and take them on the scene so there you guys go um, let me know what you think of this uh, this review again uh, I, I know there's a lot of other reviews from seasoned um, you know drone enthusiasts out there but I thought I'd give my two cents from someone that has no experience with drones or flying them or even photography on drones or any of that stuff so there you guys go let me know what you think down below thanks for watching my video and have a nice day